Warning, the following contains explicit language and subject matter that may not be suitable for younger listeners, church folk, and people who enjoy kale smoothies. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Pod Amongst Men. I'm your host, Steve B., and this is Coffee Break Conversations for the 21st Century. So my guest today is Amiri Israel. You might know him from Instagram on Show Thyself a Man. He's one of the hosts of Black Dad's Creatives. Black Dad Creatives. There's no S in dad there. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. But uh, it's a show about being a dad, being a, a black dad, being in the creative field, You know, whether you're a content creator, whether you're an artist, anything like that. Uh, he's a solid guy. He's a stand-up guy, and he's been advocating for for real fathers to step up to the forefront and really, you know, be the positive example that that we need in these days. So this is my conversation with him. Uh, here it is. All right. So, uh, you know, to start off, thanks for doing this, bro. I appreciate it. Oh man, I'm kind of kind of jacked about it. I've been following you for a while, man. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to get on board and you know, each put our bricks in to help with this manhood situation, man. Absolutely. You know, it's so I always like when you actually get to meet and talk to somebody from Instagram. It's not just a you know like right. a screen name anymore. <laughs> you know, a lot right. of us we all I know with the, the the fatherhood community, we're all kind of on the same page. I feel like with a lot of stuff, but it's nice to actually you know. You get to see a real person behind all that. Right, so. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you want to tell a little bit about like who you are, where you're from, like a bit of your background for the listeners? So they kind of get an idea how you came up, how you became the man okay. you are today. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I'm a Mary Israel uh, from New Orleans, Louisiana. Grew up in New Orleans. Um, uh, pretty, pretty. Hectic childhood, not not necessarily for me, but I grew up in an area where it was kind of kind of rough. Mm -hmm. uh, for anybody that's familiar with New Orleans, I grew up in the Holly Grove area uptown, so they'll they'll know exactly what I mean by that. But uh, um, I'm just blessed to have parents that 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 kept me out of that, kept me away from all the all the, the craziness, and uh, that that attributed a lot to what I, what I have going on now as a parent of uh, just, you know, not, not necessarily being strict, but just being intuitive, just paying attention to everything that goes on in my, my, my kids life, you know? Okay. And, um, uh, another reason why I emphasize fatherhood and, and manhood is because, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have my father. He's still around. He was, you know, I, I know him. He was, a uh, played a role in my life, but it, it wasn't, just like I say, as as intuitive as as I, I feel he should have been, but I just want to you know drive home the the fact that that it's important for us as fathers to to be grounded, grounded in the home, you know, and grounded, be, you know, be a part of every activity. Especially me, I have sons, mm -hmm. so I, I want them to uh, you know see the essence of manhood, like front row seat. Yeah. So, but how, uh, how many sons do you have? Three sons, three oh, sons, wow. uh, and a baby girl. So, wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, got a little squad going on. How old? So, my oldest is 10. We have 10, 8, 5, and the baby girl is 2. Well, you got yeah. your hands full. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I knew that was coming. That's what people say. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, you know <clears throat> just to uh, continue a little bit about my upbringing and where I'm from, and, you know, I, um, you know, it's important that we also show the good side of, of, of fatherhood and manhood. You know, we, we we are portrayed in the media so much as, you know, not not being stand-up men or stand-up fathers. So mm -hmm. that that's just my goal. And I, I, uh, I also am a photographer and filmmaker. So okay. that's, that's, that's my whole goal is to paint a picture on manhood and fatherhood with, with any any activities or any projects that I have that I'm that I'm involved in. So and it's pretty much about me, man. It's pretty much So let me ask you this. How much would you say that being from New Orleans plays a part 
in in who you are and how you developed, you know, because I know that's the city is so much character, so much history and so yeah. much background that it, it really, it, you know, it, it colors how a person comes up and how they shape their, you know, their perspectives and, and everything. I know that that city holds a very you know dear place in my heart. That's where I met my wife. That's where we actually ended up going back and get married. So I always have a, a real strong affinity and connection to the city. Oh yeah, yeah, I, uh, I definitely. And you say it, man. The city has a, a lot, a lot of character, a lot okay. of characters. Very colorful and animated in the city, man. And uh, <clears throat> but also, people don't don't really see the the seriousness of it too. Um, like I say, I grew up in a in a pretty pretty hectic area, as you know, as a kid. And and you know, those areas kind of create a level of focus as well. Okay. Like you, you, you know, you you want your T's crossed, your eyes dotted at all times, and that there's places like that everywhere. But to to kind of mingle that with the character, with the with the celebratory spirit we have here, man, it's just, I, I I see it just creates a different, you know, a different element in manhood to me. Um, you know, you know, being colorful and being, you know, like I said, the celebratory, it's the big easy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we. <laughs> We, it, it makes it kind of easy to uh, like have fun with family or uh, just you know be be or uh, animated and celebrated with your family and your kids. So it, it's it's a lot. It's levels, man. It's, I can go on and on about that, man. It's you you know you know how it is. Man. I know it's a, it's a city. You know it's it's very conducive to joyfulness. I found, but you know obviously there's people that can go overboard with that, and you see yeah, that, especially yeah. with the tourism there. It's it could go off the deep end real easily, but. One, if you can kind of manage those, you know, natural inclinations to to party, and it's a beautiful city, and there's so much, you know, love and happiness I found there. It's a, uh, it's a great thing. Yes, so, sir. Of all the things in your life, of all the things in a man's life, you know, fatherhood. Why would you say fatherhood became such an important idea and is such an important, uh, like a, a focus of yours? What do you think it is about? Is there something? You know, through your from your experiences growing up, you know, and and just going through relationships and becoming a father, why do you, would you say that that became such a, a focus of yours? Well, uh, yeah. So, uh, like I mentioned previously, and I, I can uh, touch on it a little bit more since this is the question that's up. Uh, <clears throat> so I know the importance of uh, the the guidance of a father. You know, we you know we grow up and so like, like I said, my father was around, but it, it pretty much was a single parent home. He you know he was here and there. So being raised by a single mom, you know, it's kind of I, I wouldn't say unfair, but we can kind of look at it as as such because yeah, you're yeah. not getting the full male essence. Yeah, I would you're I would not, I would say that unfair is a fair way to. To put it, yeah, it's it's a yeah. lot. Of, it's a lot to put on a woman's shoulders, you know, especially raising yeah. a boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I can, I can, I can even say for both parties because the the, uh, the the son and the mother, because you know we need those male figures around, Absolutely. you know, and to to guide us because we we can't just happen upon being a man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you have to actually learn those things. And and as I got older, I, I saw a lot of. I guess you could say flaws or, or just, you know, things that I, I, I wasn't prepared for going going into the world, you know, as a man. So I just made a, a vow that, like, man, like, I'm, I'm going to make sure my sons get everything that they needed to the, to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. And to, to my father's credit, you know, I've also learned that, you know, I, he may have traumas too. He may have, he may have not been raised appropriately all you know to the max so yeah. he, he only was able to give me all that he could give me so yeah if he it's started off not at a rushed. deficit it's it's hard for him yeah. to pass down what he doesn't already have right 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 so it's not a grudge at all you know me and my, mm -hmm. my father had a, a, a wonderful relationship today but i just saw i just saw you know i just realized that yeah it, there were some things that i i, I could have learned and there, there were male figures in my life but it's nothing like Pops, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. nothing like learning from pops, your, your, your blood. So, but you know, we we talk, and uh, I've come to find out he actually 
learn more from me now than he was able, you know, able to give me just just simply because he didn't know it or he wasn't trained. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. I you know I just want want to give my sons and want to push to the world that this is what we have to do as men, you know, to to guide our sons into men manhood. So, yeah, I've definitely found that people who who did come up with the traditional you know two parent household like you know biological mother and father there and you know you have your family and people who've kind of grown up outside that that traditional sense of the of what a family is meant to be i found that those people generally have some of the best insights because they've seen the different sides like for me i right. my parents split up when i was 3 and my mother remarried my father mm-hmm. remarried a few times so I kind of got like a full view of like all the ways it could go, the ways it can go bad, the ways it can go good. So, and I was lucky enough that I had a stepfather that was, you know, he was he was a stand up guy. You know, he may have uh, right. We, I don't think we had the same interests when I was young. Like he didn't. I don't think he really got me, but he was always there. He was always a good guy. He's always you know that that stable figure. And I think that that really uh, affected the way I view fatherhood because now I'm a stepdad, and it, you know it. I want to be for my son everything that my stepdad was and more. I want to try to build on on right. what I got from him. So for me, that was always a big thing because fatherhood is such a like once you become a father, when you're responsible for a, another human being, that becomes such an important part of your life. It's a major thing, you know. And I would I would argue that for a time it, it feels bigger than being a husband, you know. Like it's it's not that it's more important, but it's just different, and it it takes up more of your your focus and energy you know what i mean i think that's actually why yeah, a lot of yeah, people being a, being a husband yeah. yeah being a husband plays a uh, plays a major role in that too you want them to see that 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 healthy marriage and relationship as well mm-hmm. i know um someone asked me a long time ago what what advice would i have for you know like uh fatherhood tips or parenting tips and i, I simply say well I couldn't actually think of nothing because it's so the, the the list goes on and on. Yeah. So I just say, well, you know, just be just be being a good husband. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because there, there's a lot that goes in the husbandry as well. Husbandry is management, taking care of of everybody, not just your wife. So yeah, just just using that as an example can pretty much touch all the all the areas that that fatherhood, husband. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Managing the house. So yeah, yeah, well, it's, just being. It's a- being a good husband. It's a tricky thing too because you know you see it a lot. People they have kids and they get so caught up in being parents that they forget to be husband and wife. You know they've yeah, that relationship right, kind of right. gets stale after a while because they haven't worked on it. They haven't done anything. They don't go out anymore, and it's that that balancing act because both are extremely important and you kind of can't right. have, you can't really do one right without the other. If that makes sense. right, I guess. you're absolutely right. But uh, one of the things. Uh, I've heard that it's like the best thing you could do to teach your sons is to sh- or to teach your kill your children, not just your sons, your sons and daughters, about what it is to grow up. And is you treat them how a ma- you show them how a man should treat a woman. You know, you show them what right. a real loving marriage should be, and that's their model yep. for the rest of their life. Absolutely. So, so I take it you're a married man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Going on ten years. Ah, that's a beautiful thing. Yes, How, sir. Yes, sir. You guys have been 10 years together, 10 years married? Uh, 10 years together, 8 years married. How did you guys meet? Uh, Well, just like you, in, I met my wife in New Orleans, of course. <laughs> but we, we're both New Orleans natives. and uh, <clears throat> So we, we were always in the same areas. Uh, had, the, had the same friends, were moved around in the same circles. But just so happened that we would always kind of hit and miss. Mm-hmm. So I guess it was like my 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 Timing wife was never being, right. Yeah, it's my wife was being flagged in front of my face, but I mean, <laughs> we, we just never got there yet. But uh, we still we were, we were we were good friends, man. We met on Canal Street. Um, so we at the time we were both in the reggae, so I well, pretty much still is. But we used to go to the reggae clubs a lot and see each other. Um, but yeah, man, it, it, we uh, met on Canal Street and. Um, you know, did the friend thing a while, and uh, yeah, it just, just builds, right? We just we just build, but the main, the main, the most important part of why our marriage is so successful is that we we didn't get together out of just simply 
the the like of each other. We mm-hmm. we both had backgrounds that or we both had chains we wanted to break for as like family, the family dynamic, uh, the marriage dynamic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my wife went through a divorce with her, um, but her parents went through a vo- divorce, so she definitely wanted to break those chains. So we, the focus was to just show the world like a love or a marriage that, that we're not used to seeing. Yeah. So pretty much like a mission-based marriage. So the, the egos get put to the side, all that get put to the side, and like mission first, mission first. We focusing on the mission. We promise to make you know this thing look appealing, especially for the black community. We wanna we wanna make this thing look like it's, it's possible. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. like the real huck, the real huckstable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The real the real Cosby show. So you wanna be that real life yeah. example of what it should be. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was just the focus on both of our ends, and you know, we just blessed to be doing it for ten years now. So. Nah. See, it's a blessing. I love her to death, man. She's she's like, she's like my uh my sidekick, my <laughs> sidekick and my and my bodyguard. So <laughs> that's nice. That's a beautiful thing. Yes, sir. All right. So, given the times that we're in, you know, in the last I'd say five to ten years, this has been a wave of all these big changes and and everything from the way we look at, you know what masculinity really is, what it means to be a man, to what it means to be a father, to what it means to be a husband, just to to what it means to be a a citizen, you know? Like, there's so many things that seem like they're changing so quickly that it could be hard for us to keep up. Do you feel like in that time you've had to update certain ideas you've you've held about any of those things, about, you know, just just existing in in the world of today? Oh, yeah, man. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so I was already a. Uh, um, <clears throat> so just starting off with the manhood piece, uh, I've learned that there there are some some ways we've learned some things we learn about manhood that may not may not benefit us as far as I, I'll just go into relationships to start off um, that may not ben- benefit us as men. Because being an entrepreneur, being a so I had I um, I've been self-employed for maybe about six years now, mm-hmm. and I I'm actually able to see when I was working, when I was out, and my wife was the sole household take it, take her care or whatever you want to call it in the household. I, I'm not able to see what really goes on. <laughs> what really, what really goes on with, with having three kids, and even her having a business herself, I'm able to see like, well, this, this shit is kind of tough. for you. Can I, can I use that? Can Absolutely. I use uh, Let them fly. Okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of tough to to try to run a household and and, and tend to business and, and so forth. So so I think that that men we need to like the, the sort of the traditional roles in the household. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we can, I feel, I, I, I've grown to learn that we can, you know, help out in certain areas. Yeah, those don't to, have to be to, set in stone, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and not only to, for, for health reasons, but to, to keep peace in the home because a lot, of, a lot of times when, when our wives are upset with us and they, you know, be slamming shit, knocking shit through, and <laughs> trying to figure out what's wrong, what's wrong. Yeah. It's because you you're not paying attention to things, other things that need to be done in the, in a home, and, and you know, it, I, it's fair because it's a lot of times my wife won't, goes on business trips or whatever. We both likewise. When I'm at home, have the whole house to myself. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, I see, I, I get it, yep. I get it, because you know, and we, you know, men, we like to, we we we're more capable of letting the kids, especially boys, let them go crazy, wear them out. And then put, but women can't think like that. They, See, that's, they, that's their funny. minds are all over the place. <laughs> In my house, it's actually the opposite. It's weird because I'm used. I was I lived alone for a long time, so I was very used to you know peace and quiet, and silence and stillness. And like what? So now having a, a family, I have you know there's five other people that live in the house with me right now. 
Right. And it's there is no stillness. There's there is no peace right. and quiet. You know, it's just right. people living there. And especially with my son, my son is very active. You know, just just the idea, just the, the act of him playing a video game is, you, you know, it involves him switching sides from the house, you know, six times in five right. minutes. You know, <laughs> and for me, I can't just sit there and let him go. It's just over like, hey, right. you sit down. Hey, could you stop screaming? And to her, it's like, just let him be. It's a kid. But for me, I'm like, I'm always kind of like, hey, could you stop this? Could you stop that? And it's a, yeah. it's a very weird, interesting dynamic because normally, like you said, it's the other way around. The guy's just like, yeah, whatever, let him run. He'll be fine. And I, oh, I can't. Oh, but I, I, yeah, I definitely understand that. I, I understand that. And the reason, but see, the reason why I can do that is because, so I wake up, I, so I have to wake up between 4 and 4.30 every morning. I, I have to. If I don't wake up that early, my day is not, I'm going to just be cranky dad because that, that is so from, and my kids usually wake up between 7.30 and 8. So from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock is my time. That, <laughs> that, that's, that's my boundaries. You know, there's no, no noise at all. <laughs> so whatever emails, whatever, whatever I got to do, whatever I handle, I'm doing that in the morning. And then when it's time for them to get up, you know, they, and, and, and to my son's credit, my my eight year old, he he knows how to cook breakfast now. So, not my eight and ten year old, they they cook breakfast. So, oh, they they cook great. they they you know they uh, cook. They, they don't even bother me. <laughs> so I'm not bothered until maybe eight thirty or nine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's so, a nice chunk of time to 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 do your stuff, to do whatever you got to do. So when so if I if I wake up late, I. I I just suggest everybody start praying because uh, <laughs> I need my time to get my my step myself together. But uh, yeah, so that I you know and that's pretty, and I think that that goes into the question as well. Like we we have to uh, you know if if we're not work having working traditional jobs, we have to be able to manage and set up our time. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, Although all those things are, 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 are quite different from how they used to be. Uh, when, you, when you're home, most men go to work because they can't deal with the, the household setting. Mm -hmm. like I got know a lot of, lot of my friends that try to be entrepreneurs or whatever. They would always go back to work and that's usually the reason. Like, now nah, I can't do it. I can't, I can't just, you know, I'm not used to being home. Mm -hmm. I was telling them, well, you know, just, you know, just set up, set boundaries, you know, set, set your schedule, set your time. To where you you know you, your family won't be an interference, you know. Um, well, where, you know, all all of those things. Huh? I was gonna say that works both ways too, because you want to make sure that you're not too busy, you know, doing work and doing all, you know, whatever you're working on. You need to be. We want to make sure we're present for our family and that we're actually there for them, not just the guy paying the bills, right? Right, 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 right. Because that you know that that takes a toll too, like. And that's, that's that's pretty like a double trauma. It's pretty much like a double trauma. Like, well, his body is here, but he's not with us. He's yeah. not dead. He's not being dead. He's not having fun. So it's and, and so it's kind of like well, if, if at least if he wasn't here, we wouldn't see him not being attentive. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that you know that too, and just uh, you know, men, we have to get acquainted with with paying attention. You know, when women like to talk. You know. You know and just just so, so any women that's listening, please forgive me if I say this <laughs> when I say this, but you, you don't you don't you don't even have to listen to everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just pick up on the key points. Just make sure that you are, are attentive, you know. Mm -hmm. And please do not offer don't don't just offer if, if a woman's talking about something, your wife is talking, and she's going rambling, rambling, rambling. Do not just jump into Mr. Fix It mode. Yes. Offer her the solution. Like offer her the, the option. Of, uh, would you like me to help you with this? Uh, or what? <laughs> because a lot of times they don't want solutions. They want you to be attentive. So attentive and, and listening and hearing them out. So that, that's that's one of the main things that we as men have to understand that, that times are definitely changing as far as mm -hmm. that. Well, that's... We have to... I say that's a mm -hmm. great piece of advice, you know, and that women I feel like have been saying that for a long time, and a lot of us haven't been listening. It's like they don't, yeah, they don't need us to fix and solve every problem they have. Sometimes they just want to be heard. They just need to, yeah, that's bit. all. All you gotta do is yeah. just hang out, you know, have a cup of coffee, take a little ear beating, you'll be fine. 
It's not yeah. like, you, know, you don't have to you don't have to do everything for them. They're most of them right. pretty capable, you know. Right. Just be their partner, be there to to help kind of carry that burden a little bit. And then, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, but that, like I said, that so, is that's a great piece of advice, and I think a lot of guys really need to to heed that. It's one thing to hear it; yes, it's another sir. thing to actually practice it. Right, and you, and you need practice because you know, yes. uh, a lot, a lot goes into that. You don't want to give off signs that you're not listening because they pay attention to that too. Like mm -hmm. you tapping your fingers and wondering, <laughs> and they, you thinking about something else while she talking. Trust me, she knows. So <laughs> yeah, she could tell. So uh, uh, as far as like masculinity goes, like the way the traditional way we've always considered like being a man, like the the qualities and and <clears throat> and virtues that we would associate with you know manliness and you know, masculine f things, I feel like those definitions are a little more fluid these days. You know, there's that, that uh, traditionally, but there's that little box of, of things, you know, these are what men do. These are the things, and it has to fit inside this box. And anything outside of it, we're just going to, we're going to basically ridicule each other and, and, you know, emotionally and even sometimes physically beat each other down until everybody coheres to what, you know these little things. You know, men are only allowed right. to to show emotion if they're being if they're angry. Otherwise, keep it all together, keep it locked up inside. Don't let it out. You know, it's, it's that that romantic stuff. Like, ah, you save that at home for with your when your girl. I don't want to hear about that. That's not you know. It's all these little things. This this man box. These little things that we're allowed to do, and it's such a narrow uh, lane that we're allowed to operate in before we each kind of police each other in that sense. And it's like mm -hmm. breaking out of that and allowing ourselves to be fully formed human beings. You know, it's like we're not saying you have to put on a dress. We're just saying you can have these things that fit inside the box, but there's so many more things that you should have as a human to be a, a fully functioning member of society and a, a positive force in our, in our individual worlds. You know what I mean? Have you yeah. have you felt like you uh, you've seen any changes or experienced any changes or growth in that department? Oh yeah, 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 man. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but you know a lot a lot of it had, like it's like so like I always say one of the main things with men of uh, manhood masculinity however it is 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 traumas involved. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us have have. Um, so you 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 know the, the the little boy effect inside of us that won't allow us to to do certain things because we have a trauma around them. Um, so being 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 able to express ourselves uh, emotionally, uh, we were always taught, <clears throat> uh, don't don't cry, crying is for me. Don't don't uh, uh, suck it up. Uh, yeah, you, you know. And as children. You know, we we've learned to build a, a a stone wall around it, and as men, it becomes toxic because mm -hmm. when you man, when you're in a, a a marriage or when you're a father, you have to be an example. We we have to be, we can't be just one dimensional. A, a man, a man is a man. Like a man yeah. is not just just like the box you mentioned. Yeah. A, a man is pretty sort of like God in the house. So we can't be like one dimensional. We can't just Bring on, you know, bring on the check, just like you mentioned previously, or just be subject to just doing these man things. So as for, to, for me, I know the ins and outs, ups and downs of my, the whole house. Like, I know how long it's going to take to wash dishes, how long it should take to wash the <laughs> dishes. So while I expect my sons, look, this this, this is going to take me damn long. You, it's because I... <laughs> You know, I was raised to do that. I was raised to keep a clean house, so I, I keep those elements. And uh, you know, as a, as a kid, having certain uh, <clears throat> for the for the figures around that would not allow me to show emotion or not allow me to to feel upset when I was upset, which is mm -hmm. kind of crazy. That was a, a trauma. I, that was a, a situation that I had to deal with as a man. I, I've just really recently started to embrace. Like, all right, when I'm upset, I, I'm, you know, I'm upset because when we keep it in, it, it becomes pressure bus pipes. Yes, yes. So then it becomes a big situation that is out of control. I'm, you know, and to be totally transparent, I, I've put some holes in the wall. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I've, done, I've done that because I, I'm just really coming, you know, coming to grips with, okay, I have to release this before it gets big or mm -hmm. before it gets turned into a real big situation. 
Well, and, to, to, and to add on to what you're saying, too, like that, like you said, pressure bust pipes, which is true. And a lot of guys sometimes like myself, for instance, I found a way to release that pressure by like exercise with boxing, going to the gym. Oh, uh, yeah. It and it's a constructive way. You're bettering your body. You know, and you're not exploding. You're not just, you know, letting it come out in other as other areas of your life. But the problem is by taking that approach. Yeah, you can release that pressure, you know, so you can cope and go on with your day but you're never solving the root problem and this is something right. that i've had to kind of discover for myself in that like yeah like i'm not you know a mess because of all this stuff that happened but i'm also not fixing the problem and i think that's something a lot of guys have to keep in mind as well you know they find right. like, that little that band-aid to keep it together for the the time being and never really right. a, a, a addressing the root cause but i'm sorry yeah, sorry to yeah. interrupt Oh yeah, yeah, it's no problem. That was on point, man. And um <clears throat> yeah, just just that that helps finding productive ways to uh release that. You know, computers have a recycling bin, you know. <laughs> Even computers, like if you keep if you don't recycle, if you don't empty the trash out, eventually you don't get a virus. So the computer starts crashing. Mm -hmm. So we have to, as men, understand that as well. We need to do those things, whether it, and, and I, I think it's the perfect way for us to do that. It don't necessarily have to be us sitting around and talking. And everything. Just just productively releasing those to be, you know, better in our bodies, better in our, our situation, our mental situation, capacity, whatever have you. Uh, but talking talking is, you know, women do that the most. Women do that a lot. But yeah, there's it's a, a human effect. Yeah, yeah, it's a reason. It's a human effect. So we, we, don't, we don't necessarily understand that that's healthy for us too you know mm -hmm. we, we like to keep it quiet and not talk about certain things it's like you mentioned previously talking about relationships can be soft or whatever but nah. i mean you know we 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 more so need each other you know yeah. we're, we're given a charge to take care of the take care of our wives and our children but sometimes we need each other to take care of each other you know so absolutely and that's talk, the, talking as well that's one of the things too with with men traditionally we don't have uh, a large group of friends, even people that we can have those conversations with that we feel comfortable enough with, you know, we're always worried. Like, oh, am I going to get made fun of if I say this? Like you said, like, like they're going to see me as soft, you know. They, but that's something that women have never had to struggle with. Like, they can have right. that conversation. They can call a friend over and have a glass of wine and, you know, cry a little bit, and everything is fine. You know, they don't yep. think less of one another. But uh, as men, you know, I'm not saying we need to sit around and, and cry all the time. But right, right, right. <laughs> you, we should be able to have real conversations about what we're going through because everybody's going through something, whether you whether you want to admit it or not. You know, we're all fighting our own battles, whether they be in secret or right out in the open. But we we all have our struggles, and we need to be able to talk about that because as human beings, we're we're a social animal. You know, we we live in groups and tribes. That we need to be able to to communicate those things and express them. Sometimes just. Just hearing the words come out of your mouth can be enough to to make you feel a little better right there on the spot, you know. Right, and absolutely. We, and we need to allow ourselves the space to do that, and not, you know, basically bully each other into submission. So just shut up, keep it in. You know, we don't want to hear that. Right. The saints are on. Right. You know, relax. Okay. Have that another day. Right. Talk to your therapist. We don't want to right. be those guys. But those, you know, that's what I mean. Like about with masculinity evolving, we're taking. The, the pieces that serve us and we're kind of discarding, we're throwing them in the recycle bin, all those pieces that have been holding us back as, as a, as a gender, essentially, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Like we don't want We yes, don't want sir. those things that have been poisoning us for generations and creating trauma from you know, that's, that's passed on generationally. Like you said, like with your father, with my father, they all had trauma and they just passed it on to us because there was no, there's no recourse. What are these, what are you supposed to do? You know, in those days, it was even worse. Like now, like me and you were sitting here having this conversation, you know, from opposite sides of the country. But we could have yep. a legit conversation about emotions and feelings and stuff and not not come off as being soft. We're actually trying to to fix stuff. We are. Yeah, we're Mr. trying to. Yeah. We're playing yeah. Mr. Fixer right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're, 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 we're with each other. We can appreciate fixing. Absolutely. Yep. And our fathers but, but never you know, had that. And just when, when you when you mentioned generational. Just, just think of how it was in the days of when, 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 it, when, when, when tribes used to sit around the fire. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you had great grandfather, grandfather, father, sons, brothers, uncles, all in the circle. And whatever, whatever 
that just think of all that wisdom, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and when it what when it wasn't traumas, when it wasn't toxic, when 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 it was just generational to pass knowledge down to each other, you know, that so they knew the importance of sitting around a fire and talking, mm -hmm. you know, just sharing knowledge, sharing. So if, if you, the grandson is going through one thing, so, so it's not one man that won't get his question answered because you got great grandpa, you got grandpa. All that, all those years of experience and knowledge and wisdom, mm -hmm. all sitting at the fire. Maybe they do this like once, like every two weeks or every month. So it's a reoccurring theme to where we, traumas won't even build up because we have this space we can go to mm -hmm. that, okay, we know I'll get some advice from my dad. Or I'll get some advice from my grandfather, you know, so, yeah, stuff absolutely. like that. So like the, like the, the ritual style, you know, in, in initiation, that, that's one thing that we're missing as men. We, we don't have initiation. We don't have rituals that we have, like like manhood camping trips. We don't have that as much yeah. as far as the family is based. So, yeah, all that, all that plays a major part, you know. Definitely. And one of the one of the things too, as times have changed, like like you said, in those days when there were those those rituals or even like rites of passage, like yeah, yeah, you know, people weren't as spread out as they are now. So one of the reasons, one of the things right. is now, you know, I, I live across the country from my parents, so I don't get to see them. You know, I don't have right. my whole family lives in the same neighborhood like it used to be back in the days yeah. when we were young. So things have changed so much <clears> that we don't have maybe that that generational connection. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things I think is really interesting that a lot of people kind of breeze by is that some of these these traditional ideas of manhood, you know, they were formed over years and, and generations. And they yeah. a lot of times, you know, they're hundreds of years old, even possibly. And those were created. Uh, they were, you know, uh, to serve the men of those times like that was it could have been the difference of life and death. Like some of those things yeah. and some of those things have gotten carried on. And in the world of today, you know, we still practice them, but they really have no no real world purpose. You know, right. So, and those are the things I mean, where we need to, to let go of the things that don't serve us anymore, because, you know, the whole idea is the man comes home, he sits down at the table and the wife brings food out. And that's that's how this works. You know, that right. maybe that worked back then, but that's not the world we live in today. You know, oh, most certainly. And we're we're going in with a, with one hand tied behind our back into the world, thinking that that's the way it should be. When everybody else is like, nah, that's that's not twenty twenty, buddy. <laughs> you need to get with the time right. a little bit. And it's not it's not bad right. for us. It's not it's not us losing power. And if that's if that's the way some guys feel about it, I think they're misinformed. But you know, whatever. That's just us optimizing ourselves. You know, we want to be the best right. man we could be. We don't want to be the old model. We're the upgraded model. You know, we evolve, man. Absolutely. Evolve. evolve or repeat. We're either going to grow or we're going to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You man, I, I, I just, like I say, it's pretty much like 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 conquering it all, man. And so I, 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 I actually, you know, we, we have com just take a com take your man competitive nature to everything. Mm -hmm. Just see it as OK. Just something I can I can learn and conquer. I can learn to to. Maybe that, uh, look, let me let me make, break a record on changing diapers. <laughs> I'll bring a record today, you know. I'll just you know. But that's not a bad like idea. That. Sometimes you just like a practical approach like that that could yeah. actually <laughs> have a positive result. Yeah, and that you know you get you actually get people excited around you when you do stuff like that. You actually juiced about certain things that 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 you wouldn't normally be juiced. Well society don't would normally be juiced about mm -hmm. as far as manhood goes and you so just embracing things you can actually start movements you know what i'm saying the, 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 the baby diaper challenge you, know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can start stuff you can start movements you can get people on your team with it so it's just it's just about being positive about it all right and i guess that's in, insecurities as well i don't have no look I know I'm a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If, if this needs to be handled right now, I'm, I'm going to just do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do whatever. You know, if, if something needs to be built, I'm going to do it. Baby needs to be changed, I'm going to do it. Dishes, I don't. I can't stand to see dirty dishes. I mean, I was raised that way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know, so I, I spent a lot of my time outside and I built things. You know, I built, just recently built an activity center for my son. My okay. son's, they want to be YouTubers, so we we trying to set up a 
Yeah, I'm but, right there you with know, you. I, you know, so I saw I mean, the same I, thing. Yeah, yeah, and I, I encourage that too. You know, you know that that's that's another example of how the world is changing. You know, yeah. we just, you know, my my sons will, will be outside with me with, when I'm drilling and sawing. Then it's time to go. Now I want to. He want my my oldest wants to be a, a a scientist. He's in the science. So once he's done with me, he coming inside and looking at universe sandbox all day and all, all that type of stuff. So. I yeah, think. is that we have to be we have to be multi-dimensional as men now. Yeah. Like we need to we need to be that strong, sometimes stoic figure for, for our children, but we also need to be able to, to have that soft side, you know. We wanna we wanna show that we could care, we can nurture also. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. make it doesn't yeah. make you less of a man, it makes you more of a person. Like yes, you sir. have yes, all those sir. tools. Like you don't wanna just, you know, be the one guy you have a hammer, so and everything looks like a nail. You went right. the hammer, the screwdriver, the pliers, the channel locks, everything. Right. Like, right. That's, that's, I think, the way we should approach it. You were, right. you were talking about, like, the dirty dishes and, like, things that maybe, you know, historically aren't viewed as, like, what a man is supposed to do. Oh, that's the woman's job. Are there other things? Like, I know for me, cooking is something I, I've always loved. I don't get an opportunity to do it this, that much these days. But that was always something I, I, I really, really liked and appreciated. And I'm, I'm not bad at it, I don't think. You know, I haven't got too many complaints, but, right. uh, you know, like doing laundry, folding laundry. That's actually kind of like uh, it's therapeutic. Yeah, I feel good. I put on some music. I fold it up. Next thing you know, I have a clear head. I'm all done. I got nice, neat folded laundry. But what about you? Is there other, other things besides dishes that you like like that? Oh, that man, I cook. I, cook. I, I love to grill. Mm -hmm. um, so like today, today is grill day. Sundays I grill for, for the family, uh, even cooking. That's why, like I see I I wake up. I'm the first one up. Mm -hmm. So, if if a certain one, once my once my time kick in, around, you know I'm good. Once I'm once I get to nine, I'm good for the people. I'm I'm ready to peep. But if no, nobody's up around that time, I'll, I'll cook. I will make breakfast. There's nothing to it. I love. I like especially. Big omelets. If, yeah, that, that's my thing. You know, yep. I I make I make the hell out of an omelet. And especially if I'm hungry, I'm not gonna wait around for somebody to wake up and cook for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm up first. I'm gonna go ahead and cook. You know, so yeah, yeah. and and, that, and that's another thing too. We we some sometimes or most of the time. So me and my wife, not only are we married, but we're partners. We gonna make this thing work together. So she's a night owl. I'm early bird. Mm -hmm. So she's up all hours of the night working on her stuff. I'm up early working on my stuff, and then we just bring it all together. And however, however it goes, you you know, I, I'll cook today. You cook however it goes. You up today? You cook. Mm -hmm. I'm usually cooking breakfast. You're usually cooking dinner. It's just a teamwork. You know yeah, saying? no, that's that's big. You guys, you pick up each other's slack. You, you're strong yeah. where she's weak, and she's strong where you're weak. You know, and like me and my Absolutely. wife, my wife doesn't like to cook, but she she could clean. You know, she'll make things shine, and she I don't know if she enjoys it really because she gets very focused when she cleans. It's like deadly serious. Right, we're, right, we're right. Get out of the room, like yeah, I'm not having you mess up all this progress I just made. But I can't clean to save my life. Like my level of, of dirty is way different than hers. Like yeah. So, but but yeah. she has no problem cleaning if I'm do, gonna do the cooking because she, for her it's just she doesn't like it. She, it doesn't make sense to her. Like you know what I mean? Like some people could look at like music notes on a, a piece of paper and they just get it. Like for her right. like, cooking, it's like she's like I, I don't know. I just like <laughs> it just doesn't work. It. But right. you know, and with me cleaning, mopping the floor, it's just like pop pop pop. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You guys, are, you don't mind, right? That's fine. That doesn't fly uh, with everybody. She's she going she to go crazy when, after that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you know, you you find those things in your partner that uh, you 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 balance each other out. The yin-yang, you know? And, yeah, but, you know, we just uh, just to go back off on that, what was to say? You know, I'm sure we, we wouldn't call a chef being less of a man if he because he like that. So I think it's just unfair, a lot of stereotypes that go around and around Definitely. What man's supposed to be in, you know, all that stuff. So So now here's something. Now you have you said you have three boys and one girl or two boys and one girl? Three. Three boys, one girl. So how do you find like you're gonna be or how do you think, since your your girl is so young right now, like how would you be tailoring your uh, your approach to being a dad differently for your sons versus your daughter? You know, because it's it's a different thing no matter what way you slice it. You know, raising a girl, right. raising a boy. 
Are there things oh, yeah, you want to yeah, you want to focus on differentiating between the two? I'm definitely noticing, you know, see as she gets older how how different it is, you know. She she need a whole lot more attention. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so I, you know, it's that's pretty much it, man. Just just uh being able to manage the attention levels. Like she needs a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. She's a little extra whinier than they were. <laughs> so yeah, you know, just just uh lo loving up on her more. Um uh, and just like we said previously, I think as she grows the dynamic that we create for as husband and wife, she'll she'll get to see, you know, how like you, you manage she'll get to see how her mother handles me mm -hmm. and how I handle her, you know, her mother. But, uh, yeah, that, I, that's all. Um, she likes to get into it with them. She like, whatever they doing, she likes to do. So the, the only traditional thing about that is we, we make sure she has, you know, girly things to play with just to keep that balance. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want her to go all the way into what they got going on because they can get a lot, get a little rough every yeah, now and then yeah, yeah. so <laughs> they 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 into wrestling and all that now so yeah they, she, we don't want her in that mix especially with her being so young but i you know i i guess i can you know i can honestly say that i, I still have to have to see how that goes you know it's about her being so young yeah and that so that's all she needs right now is just attention from me still got as she gets road. older it'll be yeah it'll be some it'll be different needs that she 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 may need from me you, uh, but. Let me ask you this. Do you think that, you know, in the wake of the Me Too movement, you know, a lot of people definitely had their eyes open as far as what women go through and just in their daily life, you know, in terms of attention from men and, and negative inter and like these bad, these shitty, re uh, shitty experiences and interactions with men just in every aspect of life, whether you're working in an office, walking down the street, riding a train, anything. Do you think after seeing, you know, how all that stuff happened and how everything played out, do you think that that's going to affect uh, your approach to raising a daughter? Like, are there things you're going to want to teach her that maybe you might not have thought of had that not happened? Um, well, I'm, I'm, I think that uh, the Me Too movement brought a lot of attention to what goes on with women, you know, uh, like the, the the respect levels that that we haven't necessarily been the respect we haven't been given them mm -hmm. over the years i think that that definitely brought attention to it uh, as far as I, I go i mean you know i was raised to treat treat women with, with supreme respect from from a young age so i was already getting me too experiences <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> i was already you know so i i don't think it would it would change anything for me but, but on the other hand, I guess, you know, I guess it would enhance that, you know, like, you know, just teaching her what men or what boys should, how they should be around her, or, you know, what, what, what to look out for any kind of red flags or something. So that, yeah, I, I think that, that, um, the Me Too movement has, I, I guess, heightened our, uh, you know, awareness. It, awareness or you know ability to teach our, our daughters what to look out for yeah so, yeah I, I i agree that 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 has a has a little bit to do with it but like i said i um <laughs> you were already with it so, yeah i was i was already there i was already there. yeah you know, i that, feel that. i feel like that kind of exposed the 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 gaping holes in a lot of people's parenting structures where you know they teach them all about you know xyz but something like that with with relationships, with how a man should, should treat a woman and as far as, you know, dating, like even when it comes to sex and stuff like that, those are all kind of uncomfortable topics for a lot of people. And a lot of people just kind of avoided them. And then you're left with people who, you know, when something happened to them, their first reaction may not have been to to report it and to, to address those. It's They kind of just internalize it and live with it. And now, yeah. it, you know, it's it affects, it shapes their life forever after that. And then you, yeah, have, you yeah. know, they come out years later and say, you know, this happened to me. And instead of just, you know, listening to what these women are saying, a lot of guys are like, well, why don't you report it? And it's like, well, right. A lot of these women were, were never taught like, hey, you need to 
this is not okay. You know, you need to yeah. have the the agency to to say like if something like this happens, this has to be addressed. And you know, yeah. I think that that really illuminated a lot of the the shortcomings in the way we we've been raising and teaching our daughters and and sons historically. And that was for me that was yeah, a big yeah thing. That, that's yeah that's very important. Now that you mention it, because. I even just like I mentioned, I we I was pretty much raised with with me two women because there were instances where those situations has happened in my family, and uh, so my 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 parents, they they even taught us how, how the difference between changing the diapers of a of a girl and a boy. You know, mm -hmm. you, 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 there is a difference, and even with that, so like you know, just respecting their areas, their private parts, or you know, all that, all that stuff, and. Um, just to, and just thinking about that, that that may have been a some type of a supreme level of learning for me because there are quite there, there are a lot of people that don't even know just that type of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, and I think I think it, it, I would like to encourage men to to even think about that, man. Especially with raising daughters, that the women haven't been taught those things. They they haven't been taught, you know, what what inappropriate is. Mm -hmm. They they have you know. And whatever situation may have happened, they were told to hush about it, or you know, don't don't say nothing, or if you say something, you might get in trouble. So there's traumas around that too. So it is so it's just so embedded in them that if things happen to them, they it's this is just like a even subconscious. Like yeah, I want I just won't say nothing because you suck just, it up and then have to deal yeah. with it. Yeah, just but carrying you know, that around for years. Yeah, and then that's very unhealthy, man. Very unhealthy for for them going into relationships, and it's just a bunch of things, man, that's mm -hmm. going on with men and women, and that's that just need to be addressed. And and it all it all starts with us listening to them. Yeah, and I, I'm big on that too. I think that's just the the a big part of of my movement too is understanding that it's it's a lot of issues going on with women that that that's that's maybe not only our faults but we don't we don't give them the space to allow them to vent to us about mm -hmm. it. so they can't trust us because yeah. we can't they can't even talk to us about them so we don't can't think, even take so the time of, to hear what they have to say yeah one of know. the biggest one of the i always say one of the biggest problems with, with manhood is, is is womanhood you know what I'm saying? We 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 have we haven't even addressed a lot of the issues that's going on with them. Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna be the leaders, if we're gonna be the men, we have to be we're responsible for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we at, at least need to hear or just be present enough to understand what they're going through as well. Allow them the space to to share with us what's going on and then act on it. Don't just listen and be like, okay. Yeah, you gotta honestly <laughs> gonna add fuel to the fire. You yeah, gotta listen to open ears and an open mind because some guys yes, are like, yeah, all right, what are you, you going to say? And as soon as they start talking, and then it's the mind shuts down. You know, yeah, it's like, well, that's you're not really listening, man. You're not giving that person yeah, a fair chance. You're not, yeah, you're not even hearing the problem. You know? Yeah, well, that's the problem I think we have all throughout life is we don't want to face these, you know, these ugly realities about what's really going on. It's easier to just yeah. brush it all under the rug. Which is like, you know, with these Me Too incidents with, you know, sexual abuse for years, people, uh, no, nah, that, that didn't, ha couldn't have happened, you know, because it's, right. it's too hard to, to face it. Like, oh my God, like this terrible thing happened. And, you know, it, they can't even, their brain can't process it. So it's easier just, right. to, you know, you're, you're making this up. And yeah. that, you know, that causes even more problems and that causes things to fester. And it's, yep. you know, and it, but that's like you said. Some, we got to take out the trash. We got to we got to drag and drop those things. It doesn't serve yep. us to have that right on the desktop anymore. You know, like yep. we need to we need to even if it's uncomfortable, we need to have those conversations and, and get rid of those things that have been, you know, basically poisoning us for for generations. Well, um, certainly. And one of the things about too with, with masculinity, you know, we hear this term toxic masculinity, and I feel like there's such there's such confusion because I feel like there's a lot of people who kind of use that term as a catch-all phrase. Like they think, oh, well, they think just being a man is toxic. You know, that's they think that just us existing is is a bad thing. I'm like, you're no, you're twisting it. It's not what it is. We're just we're talking about these those things from the box, that man box. Yeah. 
those things that we've been holding on to for all these years that don't really serve us anymore. They don't really serve anybody. We just do it because we've been programmed and conditioned to do it. Like those are the things that we consider toxic masculinity because we've always associated them with masculinity and they are right. toxic. That doesn't mean masculinity is toxic. Being a man is toxic. We're just talking about those parts that don't serve us anymore that have been, like we said, poisoning us and poisoning those around us. Like those yep. are the things we need to get rid of. Like do you have you ever had this this kind of back and forth with people? Because I feel like in this space that we're in, like, you know, men trying to evolve, there's a lot of guys that are like actively fighting to just yeah, they, the they, they, they're holding on. They, yeah. they, they're still trying to hold on. I, man, I've be, I've been called simp. I've been called. I've been. I don't care. I don't care though, because it's evolve or die. Mm -hmm. It's evolve or die, man. And it's just, it's just, like, especially realizing. Just, just look at. So, so women are doing a lot in the world today. So, they, they not only should we realize that we should get on their team because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's all they want. The women don't really want to fight us. They don't want to fight <laughs> against us. They don't want to oppose us. They just, they're just tired of us not, you know what I'm saying? They're just yeah. tired of us not listening, not paying attention, not helping out, not uh, including them. They just want to be a part of the part of the game. So they just like, you know what the hell with it? We're going to do our stuff. And that's, that's where all this come from. They, mm -hmm. They're tired of it and they just, doing this stuff but they still if we were to be like you know what we don't i'm a man and you I mean, since you doing this and just be for men that's that's not that that get maybe well not maybe they, they get what's the word i'm looking for um damn it i hate when this happens <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best of us. But like you know, when the ego kicks in and the the woman may be doing more than me, and I, now I'm now I'm in my feelings or whatever. Yeah, that that woman still can use a manager, and mm -hmm. and there's no better manager than a man. But yeah. a man with with his mind right. Well, I like, mean, that's the first three letters in manager, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and well, like you said, not, that ego, that ego fucks with us. You know, the ego. Like we don't like yeah. to not take that leadership role. We like to be in the driver's seat. How many yeah. guys you know that can't even let their wife drive the car? Like literally, it, man. Look, I you know, and I, I I'm always driving, but she she likes a chauffeur, so yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but you're right. That ego, that ego gets in the way sometimes, and sometimes it gets in the way of what could be a, a mutually beneficial scenario. You know, because man, we don't want to just you, step back for a second. Everything that a, that a woman has going on is for us. You know, not not even trying to say that in a chauvinistic way or anything, but like when you have a woman that's on your team, she all she's all she wants to do is make whatever you have going on better. That's that's pretty much it. No, even if she's it. you nailed it. Yeah, even if she's making more money than you mm -hmm. or whatever, you that that's an opportunity for you to either either manage that or you could pull creative ideas of, from how she's doing it. Mm -hmm. And then that, you know, to be transparent, you know, as I was growing my business, she, her business started to scale because she had time and opportunity to do that when I was the sole provider. Mm -hmm. And she, she always makes sure she reminds me of that. Like, no, no, don't never, don't ever get in your moments because if it wasn't for you, it's paving the way for me to to scale my business then this wouldn't be possible for me and she always thanked me for that but i'm able to see i was able to see her creativity in business and i was able to in you know insert it into mine and we both like moving now yeah. so you know putting that ego aside and you can actually learn from your wife as well that's 100%. that's what we have to you know understand i'll give you, you know, I'll give you a perfect like microcosm, perfect example of everything you're talking about right now. So me and my wife got married. It's, we've been together five years now. I owned a house, which is in the same town I live in now. I bought it like right before we met. It was an older house, but I figured, hey, you know, I'll buy it in this town. It's the town. It's, it's nice. It's built coming up. to get a nice little main street going on. And, uh, you know, but like I said, it was an older house. Need a little love. And, you know, I didn't have a ton of money to put into it. So I just kind of had the house and I lived in it and that was it. So now I'm married. Now I have my wife, my son. I have her parents. They stay with us. And I have all these people in this house. And my wife is saying, you know what? Maybe we should go look for another house. 
I said, well, you know why? Like we're we're not made of money here. I mean, I'm right. surviving, but I'm not, you know, I'm not Thurston Howell here. And she's right. Like, but she was trying to make the case for me that there's actually an opportunity business wise where we could sell the house. You know, we have equity in it, and you know the town's only gotten better in the the years I've lived here. So we could actually make money and upgrade, and now the whole family's in a better position. Now, I could have wrote that off. I could have let my ego talk. Like, you know, she just wants nice stuff. She wants to be fancy. She wants to, you know, little glow up. She wants to just look better on Instagram. That's not the case at all. Like, my right. wife is a solid woman. Right. She's got a great head on her shoulders. Yeah. And some of the biggest problems Likewise. that I've encountered is that I didn't listen to her when I should have. So, right, right. So what we ended up doing, I right, took her exactly. advice. We started looking for houses. We put ours on the market. We sold the house at a huge profit, not having, you know, even though I didn't have any money to put into the house, just the fact that the town has, has grown in the few years I've been here. Like, we were able to make huge, huge advancements for the whole family because of her idea. You know, the whole yep. reason I'm sitting in a studio right now is because she had that idea and didn't let me be a douchebag, essentially, and right. just write it off. Didn't let you sink the ship. Yep. Yeah. So, but and that's, I feel like that's such a perfect example. I mean, she she yeah. did the same thing just yesterday. I got rid of, I had a car that I was paying a ton of money on and, you know, that I needed work. I drove, I drive it a lot. I drive back and forth to Jersey City every day. It's, you know, it's a lot of wear and tear on a car. And I've had this car forever and I had a big loan. And then she's like, why don't you just take, well, why don't we go to the dealership and see if they'll take it and you could get something new instead of putting the money in to repair it? Uh, you know, I don't want to sit there and deal with these guys trying to sell yeah, that is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Man. You know what, though? Man. We went in. It, now I have a brand new car in front of my house right now, and I'm paying like $100 less a month because of her idea. So it's just Man, we, we have to realize, man. And so not not saying to take every bit of advice from you, but don't, don't, like, don't just be like, what you think? What you think? What you think? Because then yeah. that, you're still a leader. But if it makes sense... If it makes absolutely sense, there's nothing wrong. You have to have there's open ears, wrong. right? You have to have that, you know. And as this is this is a good this is a good uh, uh, subject we're on right now because I, I don't think that gets talked about enough. Mm -hmm. Like man, you know, our wives have some good ideas, man. We you know, in order to, and it's like any 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 managers or any owners or whatever you have a you have a team that you you don't think of everything yourself you have somebody that you got marketing execs you got this you got the ceo ceo cfo you have people so if we if we, we gonna make a successful family you basically run it as your business and, Absolutely. and your, 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 your second in command is your wife and <laughs> she has one fight the women are very smart especially with women Women with head on their shoulders, so mm -hmm. we, we definitely have to pay attention. It's uh, it reminds me of a great quote I heard, interestingly enough, from the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding. So, the mother, uh, I never saw it. <laughs> she said, "She said, listen, if men are the head of the family, women are the neck. Yeah, what good is that head going to do without the neck? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think that's that's perfectly fitting right here. Absolutely, and and also too, man, another uh, quote I, I've heard." Men, men are not necessarily even. So, as far as building wise, building a house, we are the foundation, mm -hmm. and so the foundation is not even at the top; it's, it's at the bottom, and, and it holds everything else together. So, pretty much the foundation. You can't build a house without the foundation, but mm -hmm. everything that goes in. That's why women like to be home decorators, and you know, yeah. if we set the foundation and be able to allow them to do that then everything else would be good for everybody. Absolutely. You know? There's a lot more to a house than just the foundation. Nobody yeah. wants to just live in just a basement, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, we're, yeah. we're coming up on uh, on time here, but we got a, we got some a little bit left. I want to ask you more about your platform. You know, you, you got you know, have a show coming up. You want to tell the listeners about what that is and what the, the goals of it is, like your mission statement almost? <clears throat> So actually, so now what I'm what I'm working on is I'm um, actually uh, collaborating with their fathers, their fathers uh, brand, and you can follow them on Instagram and all, all platforms as their fathers. And, uh, we we 
I host a segment. It's called Black Dad Creatives. All right, so I so I'm a creative myself. I, I, like I said previously, I'm a photographer, a videographer, and do, do a bunch of creative shit all day. Yeah, but that those are those are my my main things. And uh, as far as my platform, my brand, show that self a man. It, it it's all tied into that fatherhood, husbandry, uh, just manhood in general. Uh, and the the reason for just to talk, touch a little bit on uh, Dear Fathers project we got going on is that we don't necessarily hear too much about fatherhood as it pertains to creativity or, or like creatives, mm -hmm. how how men, how fathers balance it all, uh, being uh, creative or being a soul, being a soul, um, I, I don't know why I'm getting tongue tied, <laughs> um, just having it all on them being the, the boss of their own stuff mm -hmm. and being a father as well. Yeah, like how, the how, they, how they manage. Kind of yeah, being the, not even not even not, not even necessarily the, the sole breadwinner, but like just business wise. Got it. If you're okay. a photographer, musician, photographer, a videographer, filmmaker, and such, how you're able to manage being a father along with that, whether it may, may it be successfully or even sharing tips on how you get over the humps into being successful as a creator. But uh, as far as STEM goes, uh, show that self a man, you just touch, you know, manhood, fatherhood, husbandry overall. Mm -hmm. And the, the goal is to just pump those images, pump those ideas, quotes, or whatever, and just being another, like we said previously, another brick into building the manhood, building manhood back to where it should be. Okay. So yeah, so yep. That's being, that's what I'm into. With uh, with Black Dad's creatives, now, uh, which like specific issues, like, as as it pertains to the Black community and fatherhood in that in that area, what specific issues do you think you really want to focus on with that? Like, are there issues that you feel that it might affect you more? Um. But no, th well, there there are issues that need to that needs to be addressed, and and it's just simply just painting a, a better picture on you know mm -hmm. fathers, especially you know it, it, it is what it is. We know that there are good fathers, black fathers, and but society don't pretty much show it. Yeah. So that that's that's the the absolute the main agenda there is to just promote. Like good black fathers, good you know fathers that's in with the black dad creatives that just showing that we have businesses, we have, we have creative ideas, and we all gear them towards doing good by ourselves and our families. And yeah, that's just the, the whole kit and caboodle, man. We just trying to get get them images, get them images together for us. I got gotcha. you. All right, so we're at the we're at the end now. This is the last part of the show. Now, if you know, I sent you, I told you about, we do this segment, Humble Pie. Humble Pie, yeah. Yeah, we share some some experiences that, that may have humbled us throughout our lives. So I actually have one that just happened the other day. If you want, I'll go first, kind of grease the wheels a little bit here. So now with the with the way the pandemic's been working out, you know, everything's been closed. The barbershops have been closed. So I had to learn how to cut my son's hair. So I learned mm. how to do the fade and everything, you know, get everything nice and neat. So... We've been doing it outside. We were doing it in the driveway. Now we kind of moved it in the backyard because we have a fence put up. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't have the reach with the, the extension cord anymore. So I have to do it right. on the grass. But there's a lot of mosquitoes in that area that weren't on the driveway. So I have my son sitting out there. He's got a shirt on. I'm giving him a haircut. He's kind of fidgeting a little bit. And I'm telling right, him, right. Ty, you got to sit still, bro. You, I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to make you look stupid here. I know I'm itching, and I'm thinking it's the hair that's causing the itch. I'm trying to, like, brush him off. I'm, like, spinning his, his shirt, trying to, like, clean him up. So finally, like, I get everything nice and neat. I'm just doing the front, like, cleaning the hairline up a little bit, and he's still itching. He's like, Dad, I, this hair is itching me. I'm like, I, I brushed it off. I don't know what to tell you, but sit still. I'm almost done. So I'm coming here. I'm coming here. I'm, all of a sudden, you know, he's moving. He's getting, like, bit by bugs the whole time, and I'm not realizing it. And I end up wow. taking, like, a chunk out of the front of his head. <laughs> So now I'm upset because I think he's just squirming being a kid 
and I'm forgetting. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not forgetting. I'm not realizing that the whole time he's getting eaten alive out here. Wow. So now he's got a messed up haircut, and I was giving him a hard time. So we go inside, and now my wife is saying, "Like, honey, look at him. Like, he I, he, he lifts up his arm, and he's got bug bites all over." And I'm like, "Ah." Oh. I felt uh, so bad, and I was, I, I kind of, I felt like I was being a dick to him. And I was like, dude, I'm really sorry. Like, I, I had to sit down and apologize. I'm like, I, I didn't realize that was going on. Like, I, you didn't deserve for me to, to come down on you like that. So I, I felt really bad. I felt like a real, real asshole. So I, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was something I, I felt very humbled for. I'm like, I yeah, should, man. I should listen to what the kid's saying. You know, he's, he's not a dummy. Yeah, yeah, that that's that. Wow. So, I the I have so many. I have so many. So I can <laughs> I guess I can only pull from the most recent, which like likewise happened yesterday. So um, <clears throat> I was I, I was I can't remember exactly what we. I just it, it was just so humbling. I can only remember the event. I don't even remember what we were talking about. But we were talking about. Like I, I try to instill leadership in them so much. Like that's that's pretty much the, the topic every day. And uh we're talking about kings and uh something my 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 eight-year-old did and I was telling him to you have to keep your word. You know, you you you're a little king, man. You gotta keep your word, mm -hmm. keep your word with everything. I'll never go back on what you say. My ten year old reminded me of some shit I done went back on. I was like, oh, <laughs> So what what he said was, well, Dad, you the king, right? Aren't you? Aren't you a king? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a king, man. Yeah, I want y'all to be little kings too. He's like, well, you don't, you didn't keep your word a couple of times. I was like, oh. Shit. So I looked at him like, what you mean? <laughs> what you mean? I didn't keep my word. He's like, well, he he brought out a couple of instances too, man. He he, he laid he really like busted my balls on this one. I was like, man. So one instant we we were supposed to go on a a, a ride. Like I got to take them out for rides every now and then. A lot of the parks are still closed due to the pandemic or whatever. So I just take them on rides or whatever and like open fields, let them play in open fields. And I promised them to do that Thursday. And he, they, they, I, I just didn't get around to it. It was a very, very hectic day. And uh, yesterday he definitely pulled that out on me. He said, well, Dad, you said you was going to take us on a ride Thursday. And you never did it. So you, you, you didn't keep your word for that. And I just looked at him for a while. <laughs> had to let myself calm down because he was absolutely right, man. You, you know, and it was this. Uh, so we have this Marvel Marvel card games. Mm -hmm. Now we we were we had a a, th a storm threat a couple of weeks ago. Well, man, actually, last the previous Monday we were supposed to have a storm hit. So we were. I said we. You know, when the storm comes, we're gonna sit down in on, in the dining room and we're gonna play. These these Marvel cards is with the with the Marvel superheroes, mm -hmm. uh, Hulk, the Hulk, such and such. Oh, listen, you're talking and to my, a major nerd. I got X Men right behind me. I I know more. Oh man, I, I, see, bro, that that's a whole nother segment. We gonna have to get together <laughs> and talk about strictly Marvel. I would uh, love to. Rest in peace, Chad. We both. Rest but, in uh, peace. We you know we were supposed to do that, and uh, he said. Also, we didn't play the card game like you said. I said, well, the storm didn't come. He said, well, it'd have been better if we played it. If the storm came, we wouldn't have had power. We'd have been hard fussed. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, you know what? Next week, we're going to dedicate the next next week to all that we were supposed to do. So <laughs> yeah. I, I just have to bite the bullet and do it. Aren't they you know, funny it's not like a that? problem. I just do. Huh? Aren't they funny like that? Like, oh, oh, look at you, Mr. Memory over here. All of a sudden, you remember everything I did all wrong. Was, you can't remember yeah, you put your shoes yeah. on before you leave the house, right? Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. You can't remember the chew. <laughs> <laughs> before you swallow yeah man but uh that you know and that, that's another thing too about it we can learn so much from our kids too man we can, we can learn a lot because they, they they remind us of what we went through as kids and, and just like they're just like little reminders yeah. they might not remember what you told them to do but they remember the important things like well you you didn't keep your word on this mm -hmm. so yeah yeah yeah. That's a good, that's good. Humble pie. That's good. I like that. I love it. Sometimes we all, we all need to be taken down a peg sometimes, you know? We all yeah, need to man. Just, yeah. Hey, listen, we're all human. We all make mistakes. And then, you know, maybe somebody's stressing about a mistake they made and they hear us talk about it. Like, ah, you know what? That happens. Maybe it's not so bad. Yep. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Amiri, honestly, this has been a really great episode, man. I really enjoyed talking to you. 
Oh man, I definitely appreciate you reaching out, man. I've been a fan, man. I've been following. We, we all you. fans of each other, man. Definitely. But I, I, definitely, I definitely appreciate what you got going on over there, man. I'm trying. Just Glad trying to, to be a part of it. Definitely. I'm just trying to do the right thing, man. I, I want to have like minded people. You know, like you said, we're all just putting bricks in that in that wall right now. Well, yeah, maybe you're not definitely not trying, like, man. You're doing it. What's this like episode 84? This, is, this will be 83. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, you're definitely doing it, man. Thank you. So before we go, do you have uh what do you want to promote? Do you want to give them your, your Instagram, you know, tell them where they can find the show when it comes, the show is not out yeah. yet, right? What's the uh, Black Dad Creators? Yeah, that didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so we have one episode out okay. already, and then you can check that out on YouTube, uh, Black Dad Creatives. Uh, just simply Black Dad Creatives, you can find the episodes on there. Uh, I think the next episode drops next Saturday okay. or the Saturday coming. Um, and Black Dad Creatives on Instagram. Uh, it's a platform. Uh, no, Dear Fathers, I'm sorry. Dear mm-hmm. Fathers on Instagram. Uh, it's the platform where I do do the show, mm-hmm. the segments. Um, and they all based on strictly fatherhood, you know, just uh, showing decent images, good images of father, dads, uh, men being fathers. Um, yeah, also my platform, uh, Show That Self a Man. Uh, the acronym S T A M Stam. Uh, you can find that on YouTube as well. I actually have a couple episodes on YouTube as well. So that self a man, and on Instagram, so that self a man. Every, everywhere, all hand, uh, all hand. Uh, excuse me, the same handle everywhere on all platforms. Nice, nice and easy for everyone. I'll make sure I put the links on the page so they can see it. Yes, sir. And that's sir. it, my dude. We're all done. That was a great one, man. Yes, sir. That was fun. Yeah, man, that was, that was good. That was good talking, man. Be careful. Talk. I'm, I'm going to take you up on uh, coming back when we do the nerd episode. We're going to talk about all the man, what, stuff. I'm ready. We could do that tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's it. That was my conversation with Amiri Israel. Big thanks to him. I really enjoyed that. And uh, definitely, uh, I would stay on the lookout for in the future. We might do a nerd episode because, you know, I love those. So uh, make sure you follow him on uh, Instagram and YouTube at Show Thyself, Show Thyself a Man. And make sure you tune into his new show, which is on the Dear Fathers platform. It's called Black Dad Creatives. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys show him some love and support because he's a good dude. And I, I really like what he's about. And I really enjoy talking to him. Oh, and also make sure you DM me so you can buy a sticker. We're selling stickers now. I told you guys. I warned you. I told you. It's coming. There might be a little bit of merch. I don't have shirts and hoodies yet. I know I'm not the three ninjas. What can I say? But uh, this is just step one, and this is a way for me to help kind of fund the podcast. Because as you guys know, this shit ain't free. It costs money. I figure at least, you know, a $3 sticker, you DM me, you send the money, Cash App, Venmo, whatever, I'll mail it out to you straight away. And at least you guys get something, you know, you show support. It's a way for us to kind of brand a little bit. You know, you're not just sending us money for nothing. Uh, you know, you're actually getting something in return. But do it. You know, it helps me. Maybe you have somewhere. Maybe you guys work in construction. You wear a hard hat. Boom. Fits perfect on the hard hat. You know, maybe you want to put it on your car. Okay, if you want to. Whatever you want to do. Put the sticker anywhere. Put it on your wife's forehead. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever is not going to get you in trouble, obviously. You know, the forehead thing, you're probably going to have a little pushback. I'll admit it might not have been the best idea of Probably should have thought of it before I said it, but whatever. It is what it is. So make sure you guys follow us, guys. Make sure you guys support if you really if you really do give a shit. Obviously, if you don't care, then don't bother. But if you do care, support. Buy a sticker. Ain't that much. Uh, and you know, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter at a pot amongst men. And make sure you subscribe and like on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel, a pot amongst men also. It's the same across all platforms. And make sure you either watch it on YouTube or you stream it or download it wherever you get your podcasts, whether it be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, wherever, whatever assorted platform you guys use. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So just make sure you, you help us out and support us if you really rock with us. And other than that, we'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>